stock ideas? How, how do you do your research? Okay, so um, again, I would just explain that I don't really trade stocks, individual stocks. Um, I do trade the stock indices, um, particularly the American ones. Um, my, my research, obviously when I worked at a bank, we would get research from lots of other banks. Um, I, I like to read articles from newspapers, blogs. I like to get a range of sources. I like to talk to people to get their, their views. Um, in my later, more successful years, I tried to find opposing views to what I thought. And that was a very big um, aspect in my most successful trades later on, um, as I say, towards the latter stages of my career. In my earlier years, I would often be looking for corroboration in terms of research. So if I sort of done something, I would seek out something which sort of backs my opinion. Um, and that led me into some really, really um, unfruitful paths. Um, whereas later on in my life, and this is something almost sort of behavioural, sort of behavioural finance, I don't know if you're familiar with confirmation bias or cognitive, cognitive dissonance. It, it's how we have a tendency to try and find data which supports um, our own view or evidence which supports our own view. And of course, if your view is wrong and you're looking for supporting evidence, you're just going to be going down the wrong path. Well, actually, if you have a view and you can try and disprove it, and it still stands up, um, then you've actually got a much, much more plausible trade. And that's the same for technical analysis. So now when I do technical analysis, and when I've done it in recent years, if I found an idea and I liked, I would then try and deconstruct it. And if it was still solid and it still stood up, then, then I felt very, um, I felt far more confident with that trade. And the example I gave you of the trade I described a few minutes ago, that was something where I tried to deconstruct it in every single way, fundamentally, through data, um, through um, market position, volume, volume and open interest. Um, fundamentally, it didn't stand up, but I still went with it because it had a very technical, strong case. And actually, as fundamentally, it was proved yields, yields came a lot lower that year later on, so, um, which again, I made, money, I made money on that side of the trade as well. Again, because I think I'd had a fundamental, a strong fundamental view, but but often the market will will back the fundamentals for short periods. What about identifying if something's under or overvalued? Um, Is that too much stock stock related? No, no, because all markets all markets get undervalued and overvalued, um, and that's a really interesting question because it's such a subjective question. Somebody's undervalued could be somebody else's overvalued. Um, it all depends where you come in. Um, I tend to think that markets are overvalued if the entire market's long of it. It could be undervalued fundamentally, but if at that point there's no one left to buy it and the whole market's long, it will often need to have some sort of washout before it can go higher, um, which, is, which is really where technical analysis comes in and also some behavioural analysis comes in, trying to understand the markets market's position. Um, and I know a lot of traders who, who will have a strong fundamental view but will take an opposite view because they feel the market's just too overbought, there's too many people involved. Their sense of talking to people in the market, they think it needs a new energy injection, sometimes it needs to retrace. Um, it needs to retrace to go forward, it needs to get a new sort of uh, recharge its battery. Um, do you, how do you sort of currently look at the markets then? I mean, you, you mentioned reading and blogs, but have you got a sort of favoured... Are you an online man or are you a paper man or um, communication? I'd, probably my preferred way is speaking to other people in the market, getting their views and opinions. If you can do that, then you don't have to read all the newspapers. <laughs> Let other people do it for you. But, but actually, it, it's those with skin in the market. So I've never been a huge fan of reading... Um, reading the analysis of economists. Um, and I've never been a huge fan of reading other people's technical analysis. I always find do your own technical analysis is far more valuable. Um, there will always be people with good opinions in the market who should be read because it's nice to get alternative perspectives. So I find my favourite commentators generally and I will scan them. Um, I don't necessarily have to agree with them but they will give me an insight onto the market. Um, certain websites, 
um, certain companies will have good websites with good analysis on there. Uh, Bloomberg always has good analysis. That's usually free. Um, I, I, I think because of my, my closeness to the market, I have some good, good contacts in the market, always full of their opinions and stories. And those are the most valuable to me.